So a lot of people have asked me which is more powerful out of the M1 Mac Mini or the M1 MacBook Pro. On paper, they are technically the exact same spec. They both have the same 8-core M1 CPU and same 8-core GPU. So they should perform exactly the same. One thing to note is the Mac Mini is several hundred dollars cheaper than the MacBook Pro. So if they were to be on the same level in terms of performance, the best bang for your buck is going to be the Mac Mini. So after doing some testing, I found that the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air are pretty much the exact same in terms of performance. In more technical tests like Cinebench and Geekbench, the Mac Mini actually slightly outperforms the MacBook Pro. But in real life tests, that difference is almost negligible. And if you're just doing day-to-day -day tasks like multitasking or even some rendering or 3D modeling, you actually won't notice the difference. One thing I was definitely surprised about was I thought that the MacBook Pro would thermal throttle considering it is in a smaller chassis compared to the MacBook Mini. And although the fan was a lot louder on the MacBook Pro, again, they still performed exactly the same. Now there were a few surprising differences that I think you will find interesting. So make sure you watch until the end of the video to see what they are. So let's get into the first round of testing, shall we? Okay, so first of all, we're gonna do a CPU and also a GPU stress test using Geekbench 5. And you can see here we have the MacBook Pro and also the Mac Mini. By the way, that is the USB-C dock that I recommend to use with the Mac Mini. I made a video on it. If you wanna check that out, it's in the top right-hand corner. I'm a big fan of that particular dock. By the way, for this particular test, I'm gonna have the MacBook Pro plugged into battery the entire time at 100% power, which is only fair because obviously the Mac Mini is connected to power at all times. And obviously all other programs are going to be shut. We're just gonna have the individual testing programs open at one time. Okay, so the Geekbench 5 scores are in and for the CPU test, we can see the MacBook Pro got 1710 for the single core and 7510 for the multi-core, whereas the Mac Mini actually slightly beat out the MacBook Pro, coming in at 1743 for the single core and 7612 for the multi-core score. Now that is actually a fairly significant increase for the multi-core score. So it's interesting to see these kind of results right off the bat. Now, if we swap to the GPU test and we look at the metal score, you can see the Geekbench 5 for the MacBook Pro 21591 and then on the Mac Mini 21787. So again, a small increase, not huge, but definitely noticeable. Now for the next test, we're going to do a CPU multi-core test on Cinebench. And this is gonna be a lot more stressful on the system compared to the Geekbench test before. So let's start up the test, sit back, and we'll see what the results are. Okay, so we're about halfway through the Cinebench test. And I just thought I'd pull up the TG Pro app to show you guys the thermals. Now you can see here the CPU of the MacBook Pro is actually quite hot. So it's up around 90 degrees at the moment. Uh, well, it was, it's dropped down a bit now. Uh, and you can see the fan speeds up to almost 5,000 RPMs. Now, if we contrast this with the Mac Mini, you can see the temperature is only about 68 to 70 degrees and the fans are barely on. They're at about 1700 RPM, so they're barely even audible. So what this is showing is that the actual chassis and the body of the Mac is just not able to dissipate heat as well as the larger chassis of the Mac Mini. Obviously, because that chassis is a lot bigger, it's got more space uh, for the heat to dissipate. And also I believe it has a slightly larger fan as well. So you might be able to hear this in the background, but the fans now have actually kicked up to almost five and a half thousand RPMs. And the CPU temperature is just steadily rising. It is still keeping relatively cool, especially compared to the MacBook Air. Um, but I definitely think this is going to suffer from more thermal related issues compared to the Mac Mini. So the Cinebench benchmark has just finished and on the MacBook Pro, we're getting 7,683 for the multi-core, 1,486 for the single core, and on the Mac Mini, we're getting 7,792 for the multi-core and 1,520 for the CPU. So once again, the Mac Mini is definitely beating out the Pro, but again, not by a huge margin. Okay, so the next test is going to be on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this is gonna be more of a gaming test, obviously. We're gonna do the benchmark. Now you can see here the resolution is the exact same on both monitors, 2048 by 1280, 
All right, so if we now go into the graphics section, you can see here everything is exactly the same as is the resolution which you saw in the display section. So let's run a benchmark and see what we get. So we'll start it in three, two, one, go. Okay, so right off the bat, we're getting pretty much the exact same result. The Mac mini is slightly pulling ahead. Now also what I've had this MacBook Pro doing the entire time is it's been running in the background. So it's obviously had the game loaded and it is actually quite hot um, because it has been running this game for about 20 minutes at, the, at this point. So if it is gonna be thermally throttled or thermally maxed out, it's gonna be at that point uh, and it is actually quite warm here. So again, this has been running for a long time. So this is gonna mimic a typical gaming session where we've been running it for a good half an hour or 40 minutes or so. Okay, so now that we're in a new section, you can see again, the FPS is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, I'd probably give a slight, very slight edge to the Mac mini, um, but there's really not much difference here at all. And again, these are both on the exact same graphical settings. No background tasks, nothing else, both plugged into power. So they're exactly the same. Okay, now that the test has finished, you can see that the MacBook Pro got on average 37 FPS, while the Mac mini got on average 38 FPS. Now, if you guys are interested, you can see the min, max, average, and 95% results here as well. Uh, there's nothing really out of the ordinary there. They're very, very similar between the two machines. You can also see the graph here on the CPU and the GPU matches up pretty much exactly the same with the Mac mini. So they both had the same peaks and lows. Uh, and you can also see the frames rendered are almost exactly the same as well. So really not much difference there. I think the best test to do for this would be to game on both of them for you know four or five hours. Make sure that CPU and that M1 chip is really toasty on the MacBook Pro. But again, guys, all the videos I've done have shown that the MacBook Pro manages its thermals very, very well. So I don't actually think that's gonna be a big issue. So I'm not actually gonna test it in this video. All right, so this next test is probably gonna be the biggest real life indicator of whatever performance gap exists between these two machines. So what I have here is DaVinci Resolve. It's the 17.1 beta, which is M1 compatible. And I have some 8K red raw video files from a, obviously a red camera uh, on the timeline. It's the exact same timeline. I made it on the Mac mini and then just copied it across to the Pro. Uh, now it has obviously the raw footage, which is uh, ranging from 25 FPS up to 60 FPS. There's different clips on this timeline. All of the clips have LUTs added and some of them have effects such as color correction or Gaussian blur applied. So what we'll see now is we'll actually press the play button and we'll see if it plays back in real time. Now I have the timelines on both of these set to 1080p because uh, guys, I mean, you're not gonna be playing back 8K raw footage in 4K or higher on these machines. You're not gonna do that. All right, so let's play in three, two, one. So you can see there, a little bit of dropped frames at the start, but they're playing back relatively the same. Now this is the 60 FPS clip, uh, and you can see that it actually stutters a little bit, um, obviously, because it's got twice as many frames as the other clips, so it does still play. This particular clip has Gaussian blur and color correction and LUTs. It's playing back like a dream, absolutely no issues at all. And this is a 24 FPS clip with just a LUT applied and that's playing back, no issues at all. A uh, little bit of stuttering there, but again, guys, like this is 8K raw footage. Like you're not really gonna be doing this on an entry level MacBook or a Mac mini. You're gonna have a more powerful machine such as a 16 inch M2 or M1X whenever that comes out next year. So very, very impressive from both of these machines. All right, so now we're gonna do some rendering. Now you can see here, I have them set up the exact same. So we're gonna be exporting in QuickTime, Apple ProRes in the 422HQ type. Uh, also gonna be 4K at the same 24 FPS uh, setting. Now this is gonna give us an indicator of, again, the any kind of performance gap between the two because this is a very real life test. So let's come up here and let's click render. Three, two, one, go. And what I'll do is I'll check back with you guys in about 15 minutes and we'll check the thermals of both devices. Okay, so we're just over halfway through the render and you can see here the MacBook Pro, again, quite hot. Uh, it's hovering around 85 to 90 degrees Celsius and the fans are quite loud. You might actually be able to hear them 
uh, in the background of this recording. I can see the main fan there on the MacBook Pro is up around 5,500 RPMs uh, versus the Mac Mini, which is 68 degrees on the CPU, which is actually really cold. Uh, and the fan is only at around 17 RPM. So again, the Mac Mini just barely seems to be breaking a sweat. Whereas the MacBook Pro, I wouldn't say it's struggling, but it for sure is getting a lot hotter than the Mac Mini. And you can see there we are both at 65% uh, completion. So it's the Mac Mini is keeping up with the MacBook Pro very, very easily. Okay, so we've just finished the 8K render and we can see we pretty much got the exact same results. So the MacBook finished in 18 minutes and 43 seconds and the Mac Mini finished in 18 minutes and 52 seconds. So that's under a 10 second difference, uh, which isn't indicative of any kind of performance gap. That really is just due to probably DaVinci Resolve just randomly rendering bits and pieces faster than another. So that is pretty much the exact same result. So there you have it, the M1 Mac Mini versus the M1 MacBook Pro. There really is almost no performance difference. If you're someone that doesn't need the portability of the MacBook, definitely do get the Mac Mini because that's gonna give you the best performance per dollar. However, if you do require the portability of a laptop, just know that you are getting the full power of the desktop-based Mac Mini in a portable version with almost zero downside apart from increased heat and also increased fan noise. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. But apart from that, I will see you guys in the next one.